a man will ghost a woman. It doesn't matter how old he is. It doesn't matter how many dates you've been on. It doesn't even matter the stage of the relationship. There's always one reason why he's ghosting and it's deep. It's not on the surface level, but deep down inside it's there. And the reason is always that he doesn't actually know how to communicate his thoughts and feelings and it's easier for him to just drop out and ghost than it is for him to confront what's actually going on and communicate it to the other person. So he likely has an avoidant attachment style combined with low emotional maturity, a selfish view of life, and especially an avoidance of conflict. And in order for him to communicate properly, he would actually have to connect with his own thoughts or feelings, process them, be able to communicate them in a healthy way, and understand how to do all of that. And because he doesn't know how to do it, it's just easier to drop out and ghost. So any guy that behaves this way has a responsibility, not just to himself, but to his hopeful future partner that he's able to actually connect and communicate his emotions because otherwise there's no way he's going to be able to get out of this hole. And if you're a guy still watching this and you want to get better at this, if this is something... Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Button 91. Yes, this is your favorite dating and relationship coach. Look, we're talking to you guys about uh, dismissive avoidance. We've started a whole new series. So every Monday, I'm going to drop a video about dismissive avoidance. I know the other three attachment styles are there, secure, anxious, and also fearful avoidant. I will be dropping videos accordingly as we go along, but I'm starting off with dismissive avoidant. I am one of those and growing and becoming secure. So it's easier for me to start in that place. Today's topic we're talking about is ghosting. First and foremost, what is dismissive avoidant if you're new here? Dismissive avoidant simply is the way that we attach in relationships. It is an experiment done by John Bowlby, a British to psychologist who dis uh, developed um, an I uh, thesis that young children how they relate with their caregivers and dismissive avoidance tended to be people that were quite dismissed uh, were dismissed or emotionally neglected and what they found out was that the children um, uh, would have to kind of in a sense survive uh, the emotional neglect by the parent and what would end up happening as they suppress and repress their emotions they would then be in a place where they would um, not be in tune with their emotions and their needs as they grow up they would struggle to be able to express their needs um, and they would be in a place where they struggle to communicate in general or anything to do with the emotive, emotive uh, plane. And it's because they really never got the chance to actually share their needs with a caregiver because they were always dismissed. So they became avoidant. Um, and then we're talking about the word ghosting. What does ghosting actually mean? In a sense, ghosting, what it really is, is an abrupt end to communication and you basically disappearing for a period of time right now i personally think when we talk about ghosting in relationship form it's not ghosting it's stonewalling but we can still use that same term right ghosting that leads to stonewalling either way after a while this becomes manip a manipulative tactic because it forces the other person to consistently chase after you and find out what's happening to you and if they don't chase after you well a relationship could come to an end very quickly, wouldn't it? Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, four reasons, or four, yeah, four reasons why dismissive avoidance actually begin to do this ghosting and emotionally distancing and stonewalling behavior. And I'll do a part two with the other more reasons, um, and we can actually break it down into actual dating versus relationship. We're going to sit with relationship today and break it down for you. So if you're new to the channel, um, please do me a massive favor: like it, share, subscribe, click on that fabulous bell button for notification of the uploads, and uh, tune in every Monday, like I said. We're going to be dropping these videos every single week. Um, and so you'll see some consistent videos coming through. They're going to help you learn to grow, transform, and heal. Okay. All right. Let's get into the video and let's break this down because I really want to be able to tap into this. Um, the four reasons why dismissive avoidant attachment uh, leads to this form of behavior called ghosting. I want to let you know that obviously dismissive avoidance tend to avoid emotional connections and relationships um, and they're hyper self-reliant. Um, they avoid volatility of emotions um, and they self-soothe a lot or quote unquote self-numb um, and they need that autonomy in a space to actually process what's going on within themselves as a the gentleman even said, right? But when it comes to the ghosting and disappearing for uh, uh, you know weeks or months or days on end whatever you want to call it which should not be a relationship they do that it's abandoning you and shipwrecking you in some sense to ghost anybody is a sign of in an inability to communicate our frustrations dislikes wants and needs and desires okay ghosting is actually the problem of the ghoster because they bring they fail to bring up solutions in order to get their needs met in a relationship and they choose to avoid the actual uh, conflict of a conversation and communication with the individual. I have done this several times. I do apologize to people and I'm still growing. I need to do better. OK, now um, in, in a 
in, in this form, when you talk about obviously dismissives, one of their great their greatest fears are rejection. They are fearing that will be neg- they'll be neglected emotionally in relationships. They believe that they have to meet their own needs. They don't speak up uh, because of their fear of being rejected again, and they have a fear of vulnerability and being open about how they actually feel. Okay, so let's dive into this because problem number one. Let's dive into this, right? Problem number one is the fear of you won't meet my needs. This is why they actually end up ghosting. They fear their needs won't be met. As a child, they were emotionally dismissed. And so their needs were never met by, or needs were consistently not met by the caregiver. And as an adult, they believe that their needs, people don't care about them. People don't care about their actual needs. And so as a result, what happens is they don't feel like speaking up because they think things won't change. Thus, what happens is they end up ghosting the relationship. Problem number two, okay, a boundary has been crossed. Um, as a child, they didn't set uh, boundaries. They couldn't because they were a kid, right? Um, and their boundaries were crossed in the sense of they could not say, and the word boundary means to be able to understand and be able to respect your own needs. Well, what happens to a dismissive avoidant child is that because their needs are dismissed, the child cannot respect his own needs because it needs to survive. Its need to survive is more trumping of its emotional needs. And so the basic necessities of getting that from a caregiver are more important than its emotional needs. So it never got a chance to really set a good boundary for itself, right? And so as an adult, when you are, as an adult, what you realize is setting little boundaries leads to what you feel within yourself is a rejection of other people. And because you've suffered rejection, you don't want others to feel that rejection. So you don't set little boundaries because again, you don't believe they either won't be met or you don't want to cause people to be burdened by your little boundaries, quote unquote. And as a result, what this happens happens is that people end up ghosting because they can't set little boundaries and they get frustrated and angry and implode. And this leads to decisions um, around leaving and ghosting the relationship. Problem number three is that they are actually hurt in the relationship. And as a child, feelings were dismissed, like boys don't cry and, and you know, um, you need to get up and get over it. You know, yes, I know that boy broke your heart, but you know, we don't cry around here. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, you gotta, you gotta learn how to depend on yourself because no man gonna do it for you, right? And when we learn these particular phrases, they become part of our, be- uh, our belief system that inform us about how to behave and how to move in a relationship. And so as an adult, you know, you fear being judged and you fear being looked upon as weak. And this then informs us as when it comes to a relationship that when I have to start being open about how I actually feel and begin to discuss what's actually going on with me, what might happen is that I will struggle to say that I've been hurt and I'm, and I'll struggle to say that I'm, 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 I'm hurt by what you've done. And rather I may want to be angry. And sometimes I'm not, I haven't got a good relationship with anger. So instead of actually exploding, cause I don't want to do that, I may implode and then I go and ghost and disappear from you and not be around you for a long time. Another thing is also is that dismissive avoidance are highly sensitive to things like criticism, unappreciation, and a failure to acknowledge them. Why? Because it makes them feel unseen. And I'm going to drop that in problem number four. Problem number four that leads to ghosting is a failure to acknowledge them. Okay? A failure to acknowledge them. Why? As a child, they felt invisible. And as a child, they felt that there was emotional neglect. Okay, yeah, they, were, they felt invisible because they were neglected in their emotional needs. And so as an adult, they believe that people don't see them. And so they shrink themselves. And as a result, when you fail to acknowledge their efforts, their hard work, their changes that they're making, the concessions and the ideas, it deeply cuts them. And again, because they don't speak up about these things and don't know how to communicate this, they end up ghosting the relationship. Now, I can give about another five other reasons as to why this happens. And we'll drop that in part two. But I really want you to take some steps here just to really just take some time here. We have four problems that we brought to the table. Number one was a fear of our needs not actually being met. Number two was the boundaries have been crossed. Number three is that they, that you are hurt. Number four is a failure to be acknowledged. And I really want you to take time with all of these a- understandings and actually sit with yourself and say, what's actually happening? What emotions am I actually feeling? Right. And actually begin to have a space of mindfulness. I know we're in a place of solutions right now. Have a place of mindfulness and observation of yourself as to what you felt when you decided you wanted to ghost and why you could not connect with that person. And when you begin to do that, we can begin to come to a place where we begin to make different changes in our behavior. The problem here with ghosting is that, number one, it doesn't solve the issue. Right. 
you didn't speak up, you, you ghosted, it will happen again. It will repeat itself because what you've not conquered will repeat itself again. Number two, it becomes stonewalling, which becomes manipulation within the relationship. And if your partner yields to it, it's only a matter of time before resentment builds and they don't, they don't want to be with you anymore. And then that kind of then taps into your own fear of being rejected. You've actually caused your own prophetic fallacy. You've prophesied your own doom. Number three is that your partner is left wondering and this causes anxiety and for them to feel like they've done something wrong. So now you made them feel some type of way when really and truly what you wanted actually to be solved isn't going to be solved. Number four is that you actually haven't dealt with your own individual wounds. And so because you've not done that, you ghosting doesn't change that. You still need to be able to learn how to communicate how you feel to your partner and actually have some conflict because it's going to be conflict. And it may not be a shouting match, but it's going to be disagreement because we have different agendas, different feelings. And number five is that this causes tears in the relationship and a distrust. Abandonment triggers can happen for someone else and you are doing this purposely after a while because you're not learning and you're not growing and i need you to get into that space of growing and learning now if there's something that you are actually suffering with this is actually a perfect time to reach out to myself why because we do coaching and this is what we do okay i want to journey with you on learning how to grow transform and heal these particular wounds okay we don't have to stay in this place there are solutions to bring this to a better place if you're somebody in relationships who feels like you're a ghost star or maybe you've always been ghosted we can also reach out to me as well in my calendar now there's a bit of a wait list at the moment which has been for a while but i want to let you know listen we're here to help you guys grow transform and heal don't suffer in silence appreciate you guys stay locked stay loaded and subscribe to the channel much love